Welcome back to our No Random Battle Hardcore Nuzlocke. We are fighting Misty, and this is Dragonair's first real time it's going to contribute to an actual fight. Now, I've given Dragonair Shockwave, and if I had prepared properly, I would have given it a magnet to go alongside it. But apparently, I never got a magnet. So instead of giving it a Shell Bell, and we're going to pretend I always wanted to give this a Shell Bell for healing, and I never intended to give it a magnet. And those of you who heard me say I intended to give it a magnet are uh, being deceived. <clears throat> Alright, well, that was a lot more damage than I was hoping. Uh... So, <laughs> funny enough, uh, does the Shell Bell get us safely out of death range here? 48... To like 94? I think it kind of does. Like, barely? Eh, that's not much damage. Maybe it doesn't. Oh, that's like exactly the number? Uh, okay. Woo! Okay, yeah, we were, we were probably safe from crit there. Okay, well, shit. Unfortunately, uh, Dragonair's already done for the day, and that is, that is not <laughs> what was supposed to happen here. Okay, uh, well, shit. At least it's paralyzed. That's a chance to minimize the rest of the damage, uh, on other guys. Presumably this is a psychic. So, what do we want to do? I would like to save Drake for later. Maybe this is a pivot through Ripley. So we come in on a water pulse? That's probably fine. We can go Pharaoh or we can go Frost. But Pharaoh is not going to be useful um, against half the team because she has ice beam coverage. So let's go let's go Ripley and then go Pharaoh, I think. Well, no, there's no point in going Ripley if I'm going Sparrow. Water Pulse is as damaging as Psychic. Worse because we get confused. So I'd want to go Gyarados. That might be okay. I go Gyarados here. And I can go Pharaoh on the Quagsire instead. Maybe come in on an earthquake. Yeah, because like intimidate's not gonna do anything in this fight. Cause we'd intimidate the quag sire to reduce earthquake damage, but we're immune to earthquake damage, so it doesn't matter. Literally like body slam on lappers, but like what where would it body slam ever? May like I don't think it'll body slam Gyarados because it'll ice beam for one X over body slam. Or it's stab ice beam actually, so yeah. Um yeah, that just doesn't happen. So if we, yeah, let's do let's do that. Let's do Ripley. Okay. Well, paralysis is a myth. It's definitely a water pulse, though. Just don't confuse me. Could you, could you please get paralyzed? I mean, Disable was throwing, so fine. Um, but, like, my god. Uh, we could try and set up. Let's do some damage on this. Okay, we definitely need to, like, set up a little bit. Unless we want to, like, have her heal here. We at least would want to do this to, like, dodge the heal. Um... Not sure. Okay, well, there's that. All right, never mind then. Let's do damage. All right. Well played, Golduck. Well played. Fair enough. We're still pretty healthy though, so we could fight whatever comes in next. It is Lapras. Sing Body Slam Water Pulse Ice Beam. So probably Ice Beam. We take it as good here as we can take it on 
anybody else, so let's just buy it. That sucks. It's it's the flinch would have been really nice there. Okay, uh we were Were we dead to crit? No, not quite. Because we were down like 30. Now we're dead to crit though, of course, so. Well, this worked out worse than I had hoped. So uh, we go to Snorlax. We fight this with Snorlax. Snorlax probably brings in the Quagsire for Earthquake. I mean, that's good, I guess. Let's do that. Like, we could, of course, try to go to Pharaoh, but I don't think we have the kill here. We need more damage. Okay. We're in for the long haul on Lax, but we're set up to be in for the long haul on Lax. We've dropped uh, Rock Smash and picked up Protect. Okay, it wants the Sing. Not a fan, but... It's also a coin flip, so there's good odds that it just fucks up and misses. Hey, let's just go strength. Nice. I think it dies from that range with strength. Obviously, if we really want to make sure it dies... Okay, it does body slam. I'm genuinely surprised. I suppose because our, our physical defense is lower. That makes sense. Also, the body slam para is really fucking bad. Um, I was really hoping the odds of status were low enough that we wouldn't need to deal with that. Okay, let's go Quagsire. So this should be Earthquake. So we will go... We can't, we can't do the Protect just Recovery. So this has to just be straight up. Swinging over to Pharaoh, I think. If Pharaoh can beat Quagsire 1v1, that'd be really great. Because then we're in a position to U-turn out on Starmie for damage, which would be fantastic. Uh, we do have Roost, but I don't I don't remember I don't remember if the AI can play around Roost. Like, I don't remember. Like, does Roost last for two turns or something weird? I don't know if there's some interaction that with Earthquake that's going to fuck us. Um, let's go for max damage. We are wide lens. I should read the Roost entry. But I, I'm pretty sure I read the page for Roost and it still confused me at some point. How it works. Okay, it has set up rain. So, the interesting thing about it setting up rain would be that if we had actually planned this in such a way to bring the Quagsire in, we could have abused this with our Thunder TM. However, I was thinking I had no good way to drag the Quagsire in because I was playing to have Snorlax on the Starmie, and I had no good way to get the Starmie to do anything. Um, that was 50 damage. Alright, well, we're, we, need to, we need to figure out Roost. Um... Yeah, so Roost lasts until the end of your next turn. So I Roost here. It goes for a water move. But the next turn, it can hit me with Earthquake. But I can abuse that to U-turn to Gyarados. That's good. Yeah, it seems pretty clear cut. I don't know what confused me about it. Oh, maybe it's the Gen 4 versus like Gen 5 and later thing. Because until. So a Pokemon uses Roost until its next turn, Flying Tap is ignored when hit by attacks. Versus Gen 5 Plus, where uh, a Roost it, Pokemon loses its Flying Type until the end of the turn. That's like an entirely different mechanic, actually. You can literally become typeless with Roost, which is insane.
Okay, well, if I'm not mistaken, then this is... He's coming for me, so... And if, it, if he goes for water move here, we still just take it and it's fine. Okay, he goes for Amnesia. Uh, I think we can stay in. Is this... Um, yeah, Water Absorb. Ice Fang is technically more damage we can miss, so we'll just buy it. Ooh, the confusion, though. That sucks. So this is the heal turn. Fuck. So currently no rain. So we can go Pharaoh. We can go for a hit. Then it sits up rain. Yeah, let's just swap to Pharaoh here to get rid of Confusion, if nothing else. There's the full restore. Quagsire is a little bulky, not gonna lie. Okay, so, do we want to roost here or go for a hit? But then he sets rain and then we roost. No, we want to hit here because we want to U-turn out after Roost. So we just go for an Aerial Ace. I don't want to give him the free turn. Oh, he goes for Water Pulse. But this is less damage, so we should be safe. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to Roost. Was not expecting the, uh, the Water Pulse there. Okay, uh, U-turn to Gera for the Earthquake, potentially Earthquake turn. Although we've never seen it use the Earthquake yet, so there could be a, mis you know, a misunderstanding here. Uh, if we keep doing this, we can also try and finish it with Relax. Because um, we got high Special Bulk and its attack will be Dog Water. Yeah, it always just clicks Amnesia on that, that turn. Like, both times it's amnesia uh, so we know this is pretty low damage. Yeah, let's just do the bite. We can get flinch. Okay, we don't. 66 to 52. This is super safe. Let's dragon dance. I guess two bites might be better, but... Like, because I don't think she'll heal again on Quagsire. And it's damage if we get uh, flint or we get uh, confused. We have damage up on the Quagsire at least. It doesn't really matter. Stare me. Okay. Well, I was hoping we would have Hero in here. So this is Water Pulse or like Ice Beam. Do we, do we sack? My concerns, normally I wouldn't sack here, normally. But my concern is the paralysis on Snorlax. This is Ice Beam or Confuse Ray. Okay, what happens if we go Snorlax and we take too much damage? If Snorlax dies, say Snorlax dies without doing anything in this fight, then what do we do? I think we just die. Okay, uh, okay, Stoke. 
We have currently three sacks left for the run. Spunkmire, the Togetic, Aerodactyl, and Lapras. I have no intention of bringing a sack to the Elite Four. We have, after this, we have four gems left in Kansas. We have Erica. Erica should be free. I would hope. Choice Specs Typhlosion should go hard on Erica. And if not, uh, Gyarados is not bad. We got a Flying type in the back. Yeah, Erica should be stackless. Uh, we have Sabrina. We probably want to sack for that. But then we got Blaine. Blaine should be super free. We'll have a Dragon by then, hopefully, like a Dragonite. And then we have Vermilion or Viridian City with Blue. So if we bring a sack for Sabrina and Blue, we can afford to sack Spunkmire here. Problem would be if we beat the Elite Four with Deaths, we have literally nothing left in the back for Red. At least I don't think so. Maybe there's another static encounter somewhere? It's possible. Oh, I think there are static encounters. Wait, hold on. I think I think we get um, like a Kanto starter, maybe more than one starter after the Elite Four before the Red fight. So I don't think we need... I think if we go to the red fight with like three team members left alive from the Elite Four, we actually do have sacks we can bring at least. Because I'm pretty sure we do get some more static encounters. Okay, so yeah. This is a Spunkmire sack. Sorry buddy, I had hoped we wouldn't have to do this. It's better to play it safe. Yep, goodbye little friend. You're not surviving an Ice Beam. We raised you from a little little one-year-old baby to this, and now you're dead. Uh, okay, so, Drake, what is our plan? We can click Giga Impact and maybe kill, but we can also just click Crunch. Uh, so just click Crunch. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of, Parafusion. Come on, buddy, get there. I Swapping out, I don't think achieves anything. We've got a few chances still. Kill it? Kill it, maybe? Half. And defense drop. The defense drop is huge. Okay, so we did half with crunch. So this, this is 80 to 160. This is 150 plus stab to 225. I, do we think Giga Impact straight up kills Darmy from full HP with a defense drop? Crunch did half. Giga Impact is like 60% or something. I don't think I'm confident in it. I, I don't think I'm convinced. Well, we kill it here if we hit. Nice. No! Okay, 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 okay. Come on, Drake. My boy! Watch this not kill. Okay. Woof! Woof! Okay, we had a few turns left. We, we weren't, like, the clock wasn't quite running out there, but it was getting scary. Alright. Not, not entirely according to plan, but close enough. Minimal risk, I think. But a lot of coin flips, basically. I think we played that pretty smart overall. It's really funny that she gives you Water Pulse. Because, like, you've had Surf for so long at this point. Maybe it's just me. But why would you ever use Water Pulse at this stage? I mean, obviously there's no other, like, Water TM something to really give to you. But, uh, yeah, my point stands. Alright, uh, so the next gym is Erica. Erica 56? No, no, Sabrina 55. 
Okay. So Sabrina's only got three mods, but I got Espeon, Mr. Mime, and then Alakazam for the ace. It's super scary. So even though her team is the smallest in Kanto, I think it's one of the scariest. Um, so we'll have to bring somebody to sack. Uh, I think at this point, we're pretty much committed to the fact that all of our little dudes are going to die. So I don't even think it matters that much which one we choose to bring. Um, I, I guess... I think it makes sense to bring Lapras. There's probably a world where we can use Aerodactyl as a pivot against like Earthquake or something from Blue. Because Blue has, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, Rhydon. Even like a Machamp. Like, yeah, th there's there's an opportunity against Blue for us to uh, use Aerodactyl to be a benefit there. All right. Uh, so yeah, welcome to the team, Lapras. Now, there's no way Lapras survives a hit. Um, so we'll follow the same thing we've been doing with all of our sacks. Where we uh, give him a bright powder. And we just, uh, you know, we give him a slim, slim chance of being able to, already took it off, of being able to survive. Um, and in the case of Lapras, if it actually gets the dodge with bright powder, it, can, it has priority so it can actually do something, which is very nice. Uh, there you go, Bright Powder. Good luck, little bud. So, Crunch on Drake, Bite on Gyarados. We've got, um, uh, Bug on Pharaoh. Ripley currently has just Flamethrower, Focus Blast, Headbutt. Headbutt is super out of date at this point. Do we have a something useful we can put in that slot? Honestly, like, even fucking Hyper Beam might, might work. I, I think I'd rather just click Flamethrower. Like, slightly less damage, but we don't have a mischance. Um, okay, so Shadow Ball, what are our options? Shadow Ball goes to only Snorlax, but Snorlax already has uh, Crunch, so it doesn't matter. Forty base power thief doesn't matter. Yeah, like even Brian would have made more sense for Misty. Like it technically, there's a world, you know, there's a situation where Brian does more damage than Surf. Uh, payback. I mean, I have to go second. Payback Gyarados against um, Alakazam in a pinch, maybe. Honestly, it's not that. I eh. replacing bite. Like I think Gyarados probably just kills like Mr. Mime or Alakazam with bite because they're weak enough. I'm hard pressed to see uh, a situation where they survive bite. And there's like situations where bite is better if we're faster, of course. So I don't really want to delete it and have to reteach it. Dark Balls Gyarados is funny. All right, yeah, so nothing nothing in particular that's looking all that useful. And it is just three straight Psychic types, so yeah, if we don't have Dark Ghost or whatever, we can't do anything particularly special. Uh, Shadow Claw, actually, maybe? It does learn Shadow Claw. Okay, well, so we're looking at 111 Attack, 132 Special Attack. So we'd be 140 with a lower stat. You know what? It's a lower stat, but it's a better... Yeah, no, that actually works. Whoops, misclick. I think that's actually worth it. It's a lower stat on Typhlosion, but a much lower defense stat on, like, Mr. Mime and Alakazam, and maybe even Espeon.
Yeah, because like we're never clicking headbutt. Honestly, we should probably just delete cut too. But we're never clicking headbutt at this point, so it doesn't matter. Leaving cut there is fucking fine. Okay, so if we do Shadow Claw uh, on you, we can make you into like a fast revenge killer. 130 speed already, 143 on Firo. Um, yeah, I mean, without looking up speeds, hard to know. I mean, it's a 55 Alakazam. That's pretty scary. So we're going to choice Scarf Typhlosion. And Typhlosion's like a revenge killer. Well, that's, that's the idea here. If we get close to killing something, but not quite there, and we need to bring somebody in to retaliate, it's going to be Typhlosion. Who can assuredly take a hit, right? I mean, maybe. 96 Bedef. Honestly, um... Not great, but like it's it's only it's it right in the middle of the five here. Pharaoh and Lambert have worse special defense. Uh, this might be a Dragonair staying at home fight as well. I think it is. Like uh, Dragonair. Unless, unless there's enough trainers and Saffron Gym to get it leveled up. But I doubt it. Alright, why don't we... Yeah, let's leave it in the team for the fights. Uh, we'll just box it if it doesn't get to Dragonite. Basically just because, like, it's not going to be very good at defense against Psychic types as a Dragonair. Uh, so, whoops. Yeah, get, get out of the death box. You're not dead yet. Uh, but yeah, it's not going to be very good as a Dragonair defensively against Psychic Types. And offensively as a Dragonair against Psychic Types, it doesn't have that much. Like, its moveset is kind of eh right now. It does have it does have Thunder Wave, which, don't get me wrong, would be great. But I just don't want to risk it to try and get a Thunder Wave off. Sand Slash has Shadow Claw. So it's got a super effective move that's pretty decent here. Its attack is good. Sand Slash's problem, of course, is this special defense stat is, like, the worst. I'm pretty sure it's the worst. Yeah, it's it's eight points lower than Firo, and Firo's is already bad. So, Sand Slash is just going to be a desperation mon here. Like, if things have gone really wrong, maybe we try and use Sand Slash, but... Um, yeah, for now, it'll be like that. Oh, you know what we could do for Sand Slash? I think we we sash it. We sash the sand slash. We'll do sand sash. And then uh we can bring it in after the sack. That's our Alakazam counter, actually. I like that. I like that a lot. That should be pretty safe. We'll have to see the set for the Alakazam, but I think that's the best way we have to deal with it. So we save the sack, we get through Espeon and Mr. Mime. Sack on Kazam, Sand Slash comes in with Focus Sash and just Shadow Claws it. And then we have everybody else available to actually fight um, Sabrina at full strength, basically. Because we can never really sack, like, swap in Sand Slash. So I think it makes the most sense to literally just save it for the Alakazam. Okay, strat figured out. I like it. Welcome back to our Hardcore No Random Battles Nuzlocke. It's time for us to fight Sabrina. Our levels here are starting to fall behind. Um, but we're running out of trainers. There's still some, like, water routes we can go to, but I don't... I think we need to get through some of these gyms underleveled, because if we don't, we're gonna have a lot of problems with the Elite Four. Um, like, somewhere we gotta, like, make up these levels eventually, right? That Basically, that's the idea. So, Espeon, uh, I think we're just gonna click Waterfall and try to go for a kill here. Maybe I should Dragon Dance once? Is it better to Waterfall twice or Dragon Dance once and Waterfall once? Like, um... So basically, the threat here, we're looking at Calm Mind, Psychic, right? So if this gets one shot, Dragon Dance is better. If it does not get one shot, it might be riskier. But if this is faster than us, there's no downside to dancing once, right? 
Yeah, because well, it, even if it takes three turns, we still take two hits. So we, this is always dance. Okay, it does call mind. We dance. So now we go bite, because if we don't kill this, then we have a higher flinch chance. We should outspeed. And if we don't outspeed, we're in big trouble. Okay. Okay, does not kill, does not flinch, but does not die. All right, uh, we're going off script. This is the heel turn, we dance. This was not the plan, but we're gonna dragon dance sweep now that we got a window. What item did I give this? I So here here's the thing I do sometimes that I did for this fight that's probably bad. I prepared the fight like three days ago and then saved and then I didn't come back to the game for a few days. So yeah, this is leftovers. Okay, uh, I think we just click what? Well, I mean, it's the same damage. So we always click bite. This will be true of all the upcoming mods, too. Okay. Yeah, 120 versus 120, 30% flinch versus 20% flinch. There's no reason not to click bite. If we had Mystic Water, there'd be a reason not to click bite. Alright, I'm just gonna go for the kill. Yeah, I, I think because we went dance, not kill, we just opened up the window to, to sweep. Um, so that's the other reason Dragon Dance was actually the correct call. Because now this is happening. Whereas if we went Waterfall, Waterfall, and got it to heal range, we wouldn't have had this window to set up a double dance. Okay, well, that was super easy. That's good. That's good. Um, these are... These are going to pick up in difficulty near the end as, as the level disadvantage becomes more noticeable. Here it was pretty minor. 55 versus 52. But, uh, yeah. Alright, uh, the next gym leader is maybe Misty? Honestly, I don't remember. Let's look it up real quick. You know what? We don't need to look it up because it'll obviously be in the video as like the next segment. I don't think there's any other uh, boss fights. It's like the Mount Moon Rival is the only non-gym fight in this segment of the game. This is just gym rush, right? Erica's the next gym. I uh, already did Misty, of course, which if you're watching the series, you would have known when I mumbled her name out. Do you think they replant these cut trees? Like, after every gym trainer comes through here, or like every time I leave to go heal, which I haven't because I'm not a coward. Uh, so we're going in with Choice Specs Typhlosion in the lead with 7 Flamethrower PP. I think it's fine. It won't matter. Uh, we have 53 on Dragonair. Still running XP share. Still trying to get that thing up. Maybe it's a mistake to not get Typhlosion more XP here. Uh, but whatever. The level cap's like 56, but I'm not terribly scared of a bunch of grass types, if I'm being honest. So we're just gonna do it. We're just gonna choice specs flamethrower four times and win. It's gonna be fine. If it isn't fine, um, we do have Lapras for a sec. We box Sand Slash, pulling Dragonair back out. Like, there's stuff to do. Yeah, the lead's only 51. Like, the lead is fair. So Jump Love is dead as dicks. Now, one strategy I consider for this gym is she has three out of four Pokemon with Sunny Day. And it's very tempting to try to let her set up Sunny Day for us. The problem is the Jump Luff lead has Leech Seed. So I don't think I realistically can risk her setting Leech Seed on us. And that's why I just clicked the kill button. This has Ancient Power, but just dies, right? Yeah, okay. Honestly, that's probably the biggest threat. Everything else, like Leaf Storm, Grass Knot, Victor Bell, seems like it's ass, because it's a. Victor Bell's uh, not, like, specialized in special attack. Then the Blossom is Giga Drain, Solar Beam, Sunny Day, so, like, whatever. Anything we don't kill, I imagine it just clicks Sunny Day and, like, gets us to kill the next turn. Like, we don't kill, it clicks Sunny Day, she goes to heal, we get a free kill. That's essentially how I see this going if we don't just straight up kill. Which I think we do. I think we just straight up kill all four mods. 
even at 51, because EVs are a thing that exist. For reference, Typhlosion has 106 special attack EVs it's picked up during this entire run. Uh, we're giving it a 135 base special attack. So that's, you know, pretty good. Um, Typhlosion, I haven't done the math, but it looks to me like Typhlosion's probably close to done on EVs. 1, 2, it's a 240, 270... 320, 410. It's got about 460 EVs, so not quite, right? It's got about 40 EVs left it can get. Alright, well, that was a nice easy fight. So the next fight is going to be Blaine. I don't think there's anything else between now and Blaine, if I'm not mistaken. Um, we've cleared through to Pallet Town from Gym Trainers. I think we've cleared everything on the map except for the southern surf areas, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm not going to go back and double check. We've missed a few sections with like just items, um, or just like small areas with items, like the route south of Cerulean, which is just like uh, the escape item or whatever. It's like, doesn't matter. So yeah, uh, we gotta go Route 21, Cinnabar Island, Route 20. Uh, oh yeah, then the gym is in Seafoam, right, I remember this. I remember how this works. So we've got actually a pretty good amount of trainers. It looks like we've got maybe 20 trainers, plus the gym, plus like trainers in Seafoam and other areas. So we might get a decent catch up here on XP. The level cap for Blaine, 59. 59, but he's got three Mons, and we've got Gyarados. Like, I don't... The Magmar has Thunder Punch. So we might want to watch out for that. Yeah, we got Meg Cargo Rock Slide, but the Meg Cargo is just going to die. And then the Magmar does have Thunder Punch, but I believe... The Magmar just gets outsped and dies. Like, right? Surely. It's level 54 Magmar. Like, the thing with Blaine, his cap is 59, but only because his Rapidash is so over level compared to his other two Mons. Also, weird that he's only got three. Um, kind of strange. Magmar base speed is actually 93. Gyarados base speed, I think, has got to be similar, though, right? Gyarados is not the slowest thing ever. Decent. 81. But then you factor in our, um, our, yeah, we got 24 speed IV and 73 speed EVs. 113. If I'm paranoid, I could go Scarf, but then I'm missing out on damage? Oh, if I'm paranoid about Thunder Punch Magmar, I could just run Focus Band or Sash Gyarados. Because if I like Gyarados kills Mag Cargo, there's no there's not no debate. Like there's nothing that can happen there. It's always a kill. So if we think there's a risk we're either A outsped or B don't kill Magmar, we just go focus sash. So if we fail the kill with waterfall. We take the hit, we're still alive, we switch out. We f get out sped, um, we get sashed, we survive, we kill with waterfall, and everything is fine. We just switch out on the Rapidash. Um, yeah, then we've got, for Rapidash, we got Sand Slash, um, which should work. Actually, ground doesn't resist fire, right? So there is overheat that's a threat. Yeah. We could try to... Maybe we'll have Dragonite by then. So if we have Dragonite, we just use Dragonite on Rapidash. And then once the overheat's been used and its special attack is dropped, then we can go Sand Slash to clean up if we need to. Where the fuck is the exit? <laughs> what? Oh, it's... Here. Dude, this gym is like 
it, it's a dumb puzzle because it's just a perspective puzzle and that sucks.